I'd like to call the uh, I'd like to call the uh, Tuesday, December fourteenth, twenty twenty one, planning board meeting to order. Can we have roll call, please? Claudia Vogan. Here. Jim Callahan. Here. Bob Doherty. Here. Dave Edmonds is absent. Carolyn Turner. Here. Mike Fentresker is absent. And Chair Kevin Donovan. Yeah. First up, under public hearings, we have public hearing Legacy Lane subdivision. Modification request to retain the roadway as a private way to be maintained by the Private Homeowners Association rather than have the road become a public way maintained by the city after completion of construction. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just very briefly uh, to kick it off. First thing I guess I would like to do is ask those that are in our audience, if you could, uh, it's a good practice if you wouldn't mind muting your microphone so that we don't hear any feedback uh, that may be in your background. That's very helpful to us. Um, so if you could do that, we'd very much appreciate it. This is a public hearing uh, on a modification request on a subdivision that was approved about five years ago. It's a four lot project. And when it was approved, it was approved and intended to become public way, um, intended to become a public way upon its completion. Um, could I ask, I think it must be somebody that recently joined. Could, could I ask you to mute your microphones, please, if you haven't already? I'm gonna mute this last person. Um, okay, that's where it was coming from. All right, so um, uh, this project um, is nearing completion. The finished code on the roadway needs to be applied. There's a rest a portion of Middle Street that needs to be restored in, uh, in accordance with a condition that the board imposed on approval. There was a need for a tree belt easement to be submitted that affects three of the lots in the project and we needed to make some revisions to the HOA documents at a minimum to clarify maintenance responsibilities for the emergency access easement that exists. As we were talking to, the, and the developer has also at one point submitted an as-built plan for review, which was deemed on initial review to be acceptable. When we were talking to him about uh, the steps needed to complete the project and close it out, he suggested that he wanted to request that the roadway remain in private ownership. Um, that would be a change to what you had as assumptions when you approve this project. So that's why we have this hearing tonight. Um, we did forward the request to the different departments and boards and commissions that uh, saw this subdivision at, when it was initially proposed. And we did ask them for feedback on whether they had any issues or concerns uh, with the notion of it remaining a private way. I think it would probably be the best thing to do now, Mr. Chairman, if you're okay with it, is to turn it over to Attorney Tarby to explain the nature of the request and some of the documentation that he has in fact prepared and submitted um, in the last couple of weeks. And then I can take it back when you deem it appropriate and kind of cover the comments and issues that were raised by the various city departments. Very good, Attorney Tarby. Yes, um, thank you. Um, since the... Um, the last meeting, um, we have provided um, confirmatory uh, deeds. I have those. I have all the originals in my office that have been executed, um, which reference the um, tree belt easement. So the deeds will reference the tree belt easement. We've also um, amended the confirmatory. Uh, declaration of the um, Legacy Lane Homeowners Association. So that it's clear, and I'm, I'm gonna read from the document just so you understand the um, obligations they're, they're taking on. So the obligations of the HOA would be to maintain, repair, replace the private roadway known as Legacy Lane, including not limited to sidewalks, curbing, all utilities therein, street lights, snow plowing, and sanding, um, also provide for ongoing maintenance, repair, and funding of the stormwater management components within the subdivision in accordance with the approved plan, um, provide for the maintenance and upkeep of the easement area described in the emergency access agreement uh, dated December 5th, 2018, and 
recorded at the Registry of Deeds at Book 743898, page 415. Um, fourth, provide for the installation, maintenance, replacement, and repair of the drainage systems and emergency vehicle turnaround as set forth in the confirmatory drainage and access easement agreement dated November 26, 2021 and recorded herewith. I'll run through that quickly in a second. And then um, uh, compliance with the tree belt easement affecting lots two, three, and four as shown on the tree belt easement plan dated December 9, 2020 and recorded herewith. And then to install and maintain a private street sign to the existing street sign post and maintain all other required street and regulatory uh, signs. Now the remainder of the um, HOA um, as the usual um, requirements that the board requires on quarterly inspections, annual inspections on the drainage system, um, et cetera. So on the, um, Get a confirmatory drainage and, and access easement um, that is confirmatory uh, in nature to, to ratify the original drainage and access easement, which inadvertently included a typographical error in section two where it referenced um, and the city. So this access easement is between the property owners and the um, HOA, and that um, grants the, the HOA the right to um, go on to the drainage easement that's on lot two for maintenance, repair, and replacement purposes. Um, also to um, go on to the um, 2,907 square foot drainage easement on lot three and then 687 square foot emergency access easement on lot three. If you recall, that was a, um, an easement to allow for emergency vehicles to pull in and then uh, back out and turn around. And then we added um, a language that would include the legacy lane private roadway as shown on the plan. And then um, add additional obligations that stayed in addition for the purposes of maintaining repairing replacement said, quote, legacy lane, unquote, including my limited to sidewalks, curbing all utilities therein, street lights, snow plowing, and sand. Um, in addition, um, and speaking with the planner today, to remind me of the requirements that an as built plan must um, include all signage to be used on the, um, on the roadway. So, um, we would need to take back that as bill plan have the engineer add the signage, which um, my client understands needs to comply with the appropriate regulatory um, authorities for municipal signs. So just as to summarize, we've, we've, we've revised all of the appropriate documents. Two, um, we need to add the um, signage onto the as built, as built plan. Um, and the request by Mr. Machenzi um, and the other property owners is to um, have the property be, have the legacy lane become a private way that would be 100% maintained by them as stated in the, the documents that were submitted. I think, I think that summarizes it. Um, I do too. Okay, uh, Tina, do you want to talk before I open up to the board? Or, or then sure. Uh, well, the other things that maybe uh, just to cover uh, before we start with the questions is uh, some of the comments and questions we got from the departments and boards and commissions were the following. Would the HOA be responsible for the cost of operating and maintaining the street light? Um, I think you heard from attorney Tarby that language has been added that would in fact make that clear that it would be the HOA's responsibility. Um, uh, another comment was that street signage must comply with applicable city and MUTCD. Uh, that's the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, codes slash requirements. Um, that has been addressed by the language you heard Attorney 
Tarby site earlier. Um, another issue was the continued existence of the cones and some non-conforming signage. And at one point, I think even yellow tape that characterized the beginning of the roadway and remains in existence today. We should cover that later. Another comment that was raised was who would be responsible for trash and recycling pickup. And my understanding is that on a private way, they are allowed to bring their trash to the intersection uh, with the nearest public way and the city um, or the contracted vehicles uh, for the city will in fact pick it up. It's a matter of public health. And so it's a practice we apparently have widespread on private ways across the city. Another question or the last one was, would the city be providing snow plowing services or would the HOA? And in fact, as you heard Attorney Tarby state, it would be the HOA's responsibility. There were uh, at least one comment to note from another uh, department. It's a reminder that um, the blending of and the fixing of the portion of Middle Street is going to have to be done very carefully to make sure that you not only don't create any um, puddling issues, but that you also maintain and observe the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act and the corresponding state regulations for ADA access at the handicap ramps and the sidewalks. So it's a sort of a particular uh, and careful construction. And so the developer has been urged by at least I know the DPW director uh, to make sure that he has his engineer on site when the paving work is done to make sure uh, that there aren't any issues there. So uh, those are the comments that we have from the various departments. I will say that I did a site visit yesterday and I did provide some photographs to the planning board members. I don't know if you want me, uh, Karen can at some point, if you want her to, she can screen share those photographs uh, with the board members and the audience if you wish. Um, but uh, they will lead me eventually, I think, to a recommendation after we conduct the public hearing and answer questions. I think eventually I'm gonna recommend that we maybe, uh, or you consider uh, tabling discussion to the January 11th meeting for a couple of reasons, um, but I can elaborate on that when the time is more appropriate. And that's what I have for now. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the board? See uh, oh, Kevin? Carolyn? Yeah, uh, through the chair. What is the um, status now of the cones and the non-conforming signage and yellow tape? Has that been removed or it's, is it still there? It was there as of yesterday uh, afternoon around four o'clock. Um, there is uh, some cones that also have like connected plastic barriers to them to kind of create like mm -hmm. a, a barrier effect. Uh, there is a, a couple of signs, at least one of which is in a grass strip. It is uh, not compliant with MUTCD, at least in terms of colors, maybe in terms of text, and certainly in terms of the where, it, where it's placed, it's in a grass strip rather than on the back of the sidewalk where it's supposed to be by your regulations. And it's also much too close to the ground. There's a minimum clearance under the sign and it violates that. There's a couple of signs that are temporary signs, one of which is in a grass strip on the other side, talks about you know keeping slow because there are children nearby. Um, that's in the grass strip in the right of way. I don't think it's legal there. It might be very legal on someone's lawn but in its current location, it probably violates the regs. And we, you know, there is some need for some signage uh, relative to uh, right now the practice, and uh, I believe of the owner, it appear, appears has been to not allow any parking on the street. Some of that is certainly understandable because in the summer we've got some pretty hot weather and there were some construction trucks in the neighborhood doing other work. And you know, if you had those on hot pavement, for good stretches of time. It could certainly have done some damage to the roadway that he's constructed so far, but I think his plan is to impose and try to prevent parking on the street um, by unauthorized vehicles that they don't authorize uh, on a permanent basis. So that may be, uh, is part of it. So there's a need for some signage, perhaps related to that. That's why it would be good to get a plan that shows where it would be located and understand the text to make sure that it will be compliant. But those are all in place today, Carolyn. Okay. So I guess my question to Attorney Tarby is, what is the applicant's position 
um, on that issue or those issues. Say that um, he's going to mark uh, revise the um, as built plan with the appropriate signage, but you know until that time. I think some of the signage will remain. I don't know if Mr. Chenzi, you on the you on the call here? I don't see anyone by that name. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you what he told me today. Um, I haven't talked to Tom Quinn, but this is what Mr. Chenzi told me in an email today. He said the signs were put up to protect Legacy Lane because it is still a private road. And he wanted to protect it from damage. We put the signs up because several people were parking on it. Tom Quinn is aware of it and he understands why and knows we are dealing with planning board changing it from a public road once approved to a private road. The agreement with uh, Tom is that um, once signed off by the city making it a private road, that all signage will be brought into compliance. That's, that's all I can tell you on that, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in public who would like to speak? And I'll just interject if you do, members of the audience, we'd ask you to let us know that by uh, taking your cursor and hovering it over the bottom of your screen, you'll see a reactions button. And if you click on that, there's a feature that says raise hand. And if you could click on that, I'll be able to see it and we will call on you um, as we see you. I do, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do see someone in the audience. Um, and with your permission, I can recognize her. Sure. She's, uh, her microphone is unmuted. If you would please give your name and address for the record, Ms. Brosnan. Sure, it's Nancy Brosnan. We live at 73 Middle Street. So we're just two houses down. Um, first of all, I just wanna just, what I've heard traffic light a few times. I. Can you just explain that a little bit? Is traffic there, light? Did you say traffic light? I heard traffic light. That I, I mean, I don't know if that was your verbiage, but the traffic light, there's no traffic light planned, is there? No, no traffic uh, light in the plan. It was referenced to a street light. Okay. There's, okay. A, there's a street light that is going to be, and I believe it's in place at the end of the cul-de-sac. It already is there. And no, the question- I think is, is great, but- um, the question that the big, we're not as concerned with the signage as we are with the appearance of that roadway. It has brought our property values down and not to mention that people, like they have even said to us, like, what is wrong with that street? Like you can't go down there at all. I mean, it just, it's so uninviting and it brings down the whole, we have a community here and it just brings it all down. And there's, I mean, you talk about the change in, in Mr. Tavi has talked about the change in the signage, but that's not our issue. The issue is it's a eyesore to look at. And it's been like that for two and a half years. Ms. Brosnick, can I just ask a question of clarification? Sure. When you say that, do you, are you saying that because of the presence of those uh, traffic cone type things? Or are you talking about the fact that the roadway is not yet finished? Oh, no, I think the roadway looks fine. It looks finished to me. It's the traffic cones and that tape. It just looks like a construction zone. It looks so ridiculous. And it's not something that is not blatant to everybody who's walking by or driving by. It just looks like a full construction zone. And I just think that as neighbors, we put up this construction for two and a half years of banging all day long which is fine, they were building something. But now that it's over, we're still dealing with it. And I don't think it's really fair because it doesn't need to be there. Nobody wants to go down there. They wanna chase little, if they wanna chase kids going on their bikes, do like I do. You know, it's just not fair to the rest of us to have to see that for two and a half years. And it keeps getting continued and continued and then the talk is, you know, when once it gets to be a private way, we'll change the signs. But that has nothing to do with, because they move it out of the way when, you know, the trash pickup comes. But then as soon as the pickup comes, they move it right back. It's just, it's not, it's just not fair for all of us to have to look at. Especially we're all decorating our houses. I paid a lot of money for my house. 
And I have to look at that. And I just, there seems to be no answer for that. And it's not just me. I've got a lot of neighbors that feel the exact same way. Some don't want to speak up, but as Karen knows, I have no problem speaking up because it's an everyday occurrence. Thank you for your remarks. I want to see what is going to be done about that. I really don't care whether the signs are the wrong color. I don't care whether it's a private way. What I care about is the fact that how can somebody get away with letting it look like a construction zone? That's what it looks like. Thank you. Good is there um, any Mr. Chairman, I'm looking through the audience. Again, if you would, um, is if there you'd anyone like else to... the audience would like to speak on this matter? I see no one else, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Seeing none, we go back to the planning director for a recommendation, unless the board has any more questions. Carol, uh, Claudia? So, what I'm getting here is a developer who originally came to us with a subdivision that asked for a public way and we approved it as a public way and we assumed that the way would look like any other public way in the city of Woburn. And then the developer is now before us, I believe on a modification is that right, Tina? Yes, yes. And is asking for us to modify an approved plan that has a public way um, and to change, change that into a private way. And I, I have a sense, and perhaps I'll direct this question to Attorney Tarby, who may or may not be able to answer it. But I have a sense that the petitioner wants to modify the plan in order to have this road look a certain way or to have an ability to um, sort of exert sort of more control over things like traffic cones and tape and who gets to park there, then a public way would allow. And so I'm not suggesting that that is in any way, you know, some sort of ulterior motive. But what I'm getting so far is that as, as a city, right, what is in it for us? What is the interest of the public in modifying this plan to make it a private way instead of a public way. And then once I kind of get a sense of what's sort of, you know, the it, public interest in us doing this, then I want to contrast that with, well, what is the detriment to the public interest? So, you know, I'm, I'm now trying to figure out here what the cost and the benefit is of, of, of letting the developer change what his original plan was. So if either uh, Attorney Tarby or Tina would like to help me with those questions, that's what I'm sort of struggling with. Okay, well, uh, the, the benefit to the city is it's one less roadway to maintain, to plow, um, to perform whatever repairs are, are necessary. We stated that the as-built plan would have to have the um, signage on there that complies with the appropriate regulatory authority that controls signs. I think Tina mentioned the um, you know regulations that that do that. So we're taking a step forward to resolve the sign sign problem by that, and. Um, you know, the board may want to um, consider a condition, uh, proposed condition that I 
of written note that states um, a condition of approval shall be that the applicant shall revise the as built plan to include all signage, which signage shall be in compliance with all appropriate municipal regulations for private street signage. That's just a that's just a suggestion, um, but you know what's supposed to happen here is the as built plan gets updated with the signage, and that's the signage that would be on Legacy Lane. Um, and what happens after that? I don't think anyone has a control. You know, I you drive all over the city and you see people with those um, you know slow signs with the, the green with so you know little guy holding a sign. I've, I've gone through streets with those, uh, you know, in one of the lanes. It, it happens all, o- all over the city. Um, but what we're saying here is that there'd be a requirement that all, all the signage, you know, being those signs that were in the, the photos taken, you know, yesterday. Um, you know, there's one sign that's in the... Um, planting strip along the curb that, has to, that would have to be moved to the, the back of the sidewalk and at the appropriate height. There's um, you know, other signs on the, on the poles that um, I'm sure would have to be revised. Um, you know, when I, I can't read what the sign on the fence is or what, or what that says, but um, you know, all the signs would have to be, be in compliance. Mm-hmm. And Joe, I'm looking at the picture that um, the speaker referenced, which is a bunch of, I'm not sure they're traffic cones. They look somewhat permanent, um, stuck in the ground. I can't tell from the picture exactly what the mechanism is of how they're stuck in there with, with tape on it. And I'm getting the sense that this is a, mechanism by which um, this private way would be having some sort of controlled access or something. So I'm getting the sense that there might be some issue with the continued existence of big orange cones and tape in perpetuity. Could, could someone help me with that? Joe, do you have any thoughts on, oh, Tina, thank you. I appreciate oh, that. I, I, was using, I was using the raised hand feature here. <laughs> um, yes, so I've thought about this because it is very striking when you go down the street, uh, even though I'd seen photographs of it that have been sent to the office, you really do notice it is an unsightly condition. And when you think about it, I think it is to try to restrict and reinforce the notion of don't come in here. But I think that the planning board should consider, and I think it has the authority to consider requiring that they be removed. What they in essence do is narrow down and neck down the width of the pavement of that roadway. And you did approve a certain design with a certain pavement width that was gonna be needed. And so while for some period of time, I do think it was you know, perhaps not neighborly, but certainly appropriate or okay for him to have them in there when things were under construction. It's now been a very long time and may in fact, unless conditioned against it, might become a a permanent feature. So my thought would be to address it outright, perhaps in two ways. In the longer term, if you were to approve a change and allow it to remain a private way, maybe you would do it conditioned upon some condition that precluded him ever uh, installing or erecting barriers and will find the right language and just say that you, you can't do that um, on, on, on this private roadway to prevent that practice in the future. Uh, and then uh, another thing to consider would be whether or not to require the developer, if you, if you agree with the notion that the approved subdivision plan and the, therefore the roadway needs to be at least a minimum width. And that's not available when those barriers are in that placement, then perhaps we can immediately require their removal because the, the roadway is not operating as it was intended, designed and constructed when they have them in the road. 
that's how I might think about it. Okay, so I have a follow up question through the chair. So if this remains a public way, clearly there is not going to be any private person, de former developer, resident, whoever, that has sort of the ability to erect anything in a public street, like forever, right? Am I, am I correct on that, that, that I can't go out to the public street in front of my house and put anything in the street that I have any expectation will remain for any period of time, DPW or whoever is going to come in and get that away. Am I, am I right on both of them? I believe, I believe you are. Okay. I believe you are. So, so my question is seeing that I'm getting the sense that there is someone, perhaps the developer, perhaps someone else in this area who is interested in restricting this particular street for whatever reason, and has gone, has, has, has sort of originally proposed this as a public way and for whatever reason has now asked us to change. I'll be upfront. My concern is enforcement. So if we go ahead and say, okay, we'll modify our approved plan that allows for a public street only, and then we'll allow a modification to a private road, I'm getting the sense that enforcement of barriers may be an issue in the future. So Tina, can you address, or Joe, I'm, I'm easy. I have a concern that in a private way situation, we can condition our approval of this private way however we want to. But my question is next year or the year after, if all of a sudden there are barriers in the road, what's the enforcement mechanism of such a condition? Um, it's a good question. Let me just back up for one second. So first of all, those um, cones that you see in the street are not, you know, connected into the street. I see them on construction sites all the time, and it's a tape. You know, you can pull it five feet apart, you can pull it 10 feet apart, number one. Number two, um, when I talked to Mr. McKenzie about it, he said there's, there's no issue with FedEx, UPS, Amazon trucks for making the, the, the turn. I know I'm just stating, you know, what, what's happening out there. Um, and then, um, you know, number, number three, um, you know, I, as I said a few minutes ago, I see these things all over the city where people put things out in the street to, for people to slow down. Um, and they're in, into the right of way. And I guess, you know, what is the enforcement? I think the enforcement is, is, D, is DPW, um, you know, would probably have the right to, um, you know, remove it, even if, it, even if it's a, a private way. There are plenty of private ways um, around the city that DPW goes in and plows, DPW um, will, will sand at times and, um, you know, I would suggest that probably DPW would have the authority to do that, or um, would the board have the right to um, rescind their approval? I don't know, I haven't, I haven't looked at it. Well, you know, in the interest of just being upfront, um, yeah. I myself would not vote in favor of this proposal without uh, airtight answer on the issue of enforceability. And I don't know if this is something that perhaps the city solicitor could opine on as to whether if we uh, were to uh, modify this street or any other street in the city of Woburn to be a private way, if there was some uh, obstruction that was erected in the street or some something that happened a year or two years or whatever, what is the enforcement of either a condition of approval or simply you can't have stuff in either a public way or a private way? So, so 
without um, clarity on enforcement, knowing that this has been an issue in the past, and I have, you know, I have no idea whether it's going to be an issue in the future. Again, I'm not saying I know why the developer has wanted to change a public way to a private way, no idea, but I'm concerned um, enough about the situation to ask the question of enforcement of any condition that the planning board could place on approving this. I'm not uh, wild about sort of a rescinding option, uh, knowing just as a practical matter how difficult that would be. You know, that that wouldn't assuage my concern. So that's where I am on it. Yeah, so if I could just go to the reason why the request is being made. So the three new houses are all owned and occupied by Mr. Vicenzi's three children and their family. So that's the reason he's, he, he's made the request for a private way so that mm -hmm. his family, um, people aren't pulling in there and pulling out um, landscaping trucks on, on parking there uh, to service other, other houses in the neighborhood um, and other people aren't, aren't parking in there, um, you know, during the night or, or during the day, so. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, well, I appreciate, I appreciate knowing the reason. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the unfortunate part about this is, um, you know, there are other neighbors near that are not family members that um, apparently are, are grieved, aggrieved is the word I meant, um, with the, the way that the um, road has been you know, presented to them up until now. And so therefore I'm concerned about um, the wider public. Of course, I'm concerned about um, Mr. Mischenzi and his family too, but I'm also concerned about sort of the neighborhood, the wider public and not having this become a bone of contention in the future. So that yep. is still a concern. Yep, well, to that point, um... The concern, the concern is legitimate. I'm not saying it's not legitimate, but all about is within 300 feet of this property were notified of this hearing. I don't have a copy of the abutters list here. I would imagine there had to be at least 30, you know, properties um, from this property. And we, it appears that we have, you know, one, one abutter that's appeared to express their concern. And I'm not downplaying that concern. I'm just stating a fact. Right, and and the abutter that spoke was very clear that she didn't think that she was the only one. But but regardless, um, the policy that I'm being asked to to sort of move on is: can a family, can a set of people, um, have a street in the city of Woburn that they all live on, and attempt to restrict access to that street mm -hmm. in a way that maybe is not um, conducive to the rest of the neighborhood. Like I get that, you know, in a small street with all family members, there may not be an appetite to have, you know, lots of activity from people that don't live there. You know, obviously anybody in the city of Woburn is not thrilled when out, you know, other people come in and park on their street or, you know, use their street that don't live there, you know, so, so that's kind of universal. Yep. But the amount of signage here, the amount of sort of, you know, cones and obstructions, I mean, I get that this is a big issue, all right? you know, the amount of signs and, you know, I, I understand, I think what's going on here. And my concern is that by um, weighing the uh, pros and cons to the public's interest of moving this from a private, a public way to a private way, you know, I'm concerned. So I, I remain concerned. So maybe, you know, maybe the, maybe the answer is what you, you posed the question a few minutes ago, maybe city solicitor should opine on, on the enforcement issue. Mm -hmm. to help maybe so. 
help you make that decision. Maybe so. So, you know, that, I mean, I certainly welcome any other board input, but, you know, I think that is, that is where I'm coming out that, you know, technically with, you know, the technical aspects of the signs and the technical aspects of the as-built plan, you know, all right, I get that. But, you know, I'm struggling with what I see as sort of a fundamental um, conflict here between, um, you know, a private way and how the administration of that in the future will affect the wider neighborhood versus, you know, the fact that it is now approved as a public way, which would essentially prohibit anyone from doing anything like that off the bat. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other input from the board? Seeing none. Uh, yeah, my uh, Jim. concern uh, is that this matter needs a little bit more attention that Claudia spoke about. But I think in the interim, I think a letter should be sent from the planning board to the developer to have all signage and roadway and uh, blockades or other means removed immediately. Uh, within 24 hours until this is resolved because it was granted as a public way. Uh, and if they win their petition for private roadway, then so be it. The signage will all be addressed at that point. But in the interim, I think it's uh, in the best of the entire neighborhood to try and mitigate the situation. Any other input from the board? Seeing none, Claudia. I mean, I'm sorry, Tina. Do you have any? Sure. Um, well, I, I would like to form a, a recommendation for your consideration, and that would be to continue this public hearing to the next meeting of the planning board, which is scheduled for January 11th, uh, 2022, at 7 p.m. Right now, that meeting is scheduled to be a in-person meeting at Woburn City Hall, but given COVID, it would be just for the benefit of those in the audience, subject potentially to change to in-person should conditions warrant. Um, doing the continuance would allow a couple of things to get that airtight answer regarding enforceability uh, of a condition regarding the signage or the um, barriers. Uh, it would also allow us to share with you a third document it was talked about and discussed this evening, but the board members have not yet seen it in its revised form and we could do that in the interim. Also allow us obviously to receive that as built and the text of the signage so that maybe we could see the location, um, not only the location, but also confirm um, compliance with applicable regulations as well. As for the barriers in the signage and Jim's comment, um, I am in favor of the idea of recommending to you that the barriers be removed immediately. I am a little sensitive to the fact that this roadway is designed to be a public way, but we haven't yet accepted it uh, or recommended it be accepted by the city. And it is still technically under construction. The final code isn't down. So I, I'm a little more hesitant about uh, lifting or requiring the lifting of the parking requirements immediately because if there were to become any damage as a result of that, um, you know, it might make the situation a little bit messy. So uh, I guess my recommendation in the end would be perhaps to consider requiring the barriers being removed immediately as obstructions um, in addition to the continuance. I'd make a motion to accept the planning director's recommendation, which I understand to send a communication to the city solicitor um, asking for her opinion as to enforceability of any conditions on a public way, um, sending a letter to the developer uh, stating that uh, the barriers that obstruct the street need to be removed within 24 hours of his receipt of the communication. Um, and then with respect to continuing the matter, to our next hearing date on the 11th at seven o'clock um, with respect to getting the documentation uh, prepared 
uh, that is certainly uh, would be part of the motion as well. Tina, did I miss anything in my restatement? No, you did not. All right, that would be my motion. I will second that. Okay, motion made by Claudia, second by Bob to continue the hearing till January 11th. Uh, At 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Uh, we roll call, please. Claudia Bolgan. Aye. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Doherty. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Kevin Donovan. Aye. Five in favor. Five in favor. None opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Tavi. Thank you. Okay, next up on the public hearings, proposed zoning text amendment to further amend the 1985 City of Woburn Zoning Ordinance by A, deleting its entirely section 11.6.12 rooftop dining in the VD district and insert a new section 11.6.12 in its place and B, deleting note 27 from notes to 5.1 table of use of regulations and in inserting it in its place the following. 27 rooftop Dining may be authorized by special permit from the city council if the conditions outlined in section 11.6.12 are met. So, um, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I can promise you this will be the last time this year you see a rooftop dining amendment. <laughs> and for those in the audience, I can promise that because it is our last meeting of the entire year. Um, these amendments that are before the board this evening were actually drafted by the city solicitor. She came up with them a number of months ago uh, and had shared them with the council at that time. But then we determined that the um, nature of her amendments were outside the so-called four corners of the legal ads that had been placed for the earlier zoning amendments. So it was advertised uh, separately. The hearings are being held now between obviously the board here and the city council, which is hopeful that you will recommend this evening that will allow them to take a final vote of adoption uh, at their meeting next week. The amendments, as I said, were uh, mentioned and suggested by the city solicitor. She also did share that with the um, building inspector and myself, gave us an opportunity to offer our amendments, which she uh, largely or wholly incorporated. And so um, it is a public hearing and I'm available to answer any questions, but uh, upon completion of the hearing, I'm gonna recommend that the planning board in turn recommend to the council that the amendments be adopted as drafted. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? I see none, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone out the public would like to have some input or questions? If there are, I'll just say quickly, uh, hover your cursor over the bottom of your screen, touch the reactions button, and you'll see the raised hand feature. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm looking through the audience now, and I don't see anybody with their hand raised. I see a nun, uh, the point of director said uh, the point of staff. I would make a point. motion to close the public hearing. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Second that. A motion made by Claudia, close the public hearing. Second by Bob. Uh, roll call, please. Claudia Bogan. Aye. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Darty. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Kevin Denovan. Aye. Five in favor, none opposed. Uh, the point in Planning director's recommendation was to uh, recommend the planning board issue a favorable report of the proposed zoning text amendments. So moved. Second. Motion made by Bob, second by Claudia. Roll call, please. Claudia Bogan. Aye. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Darty. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Kevin Denovan. Aye. Five in favor, none opposed. Thank you. Next up, under subdivisions. Alan R. Garris Drive, 89-92 Pearl Street, discussion, decision on need or not for street at the end of the cul-de-sac, Cattle Crossing LLC. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I put this on the agenda to see if we, uh, as a collective body, particularly the planning board, uh, could come to a conclusion on whether or not to require the installation of a street light uh, in this subdivision. One was in fact included on the original approved plan and I believe the location was at the very end of the new cul-de-sac. Uh, as it turned out, the engineering department discovered that that light was not put in, but uh, uh, he noted, uh, the reviewer noted that the existing or what had been the existing street light 
on Pearl Street had been relocated as part of the construction process. And it was um, relocated in such a location that it technically fell within 300 feet of the end of the cul-de-sac. And that's important because that happens to be your requirement is one street light for every 300 feet. So we had discussed at an earlier meeting, the fact that the light was missing. And there was the discussion about the possibility that the existing street light on Pearl Street might provide enough light uh, such that a new additional street light at the end of the cul-de-sac might not be needed. I don't know if any members had an opportunity to drive by the property. And if so, whether they have an opinion as to whether a street light should be required. Uh, Tina, if I may, uh, uh, through the chair, Kevin, I actually had the opportunity to go by there this evening. Um, and I think that it was uh, pretty dark. Um, and if I had to make a decision today, I, I would recommend that it would be required in the cul-de-sac. Thank you. Another input from the board. Thank you, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Sir, Chair. Jim. Yeah, the same opinion as Carolyn. Um, there may be an alternative when I looked at it. Um, there's a utility pole opposite the cul-de-sac that may achieve the same goal uh, to illuminate the intersection, but uh, without it, it's fairly dark and there's a dangerous intersection just uh, south of that that was a concern when we voted on this development. Um, Pearl wanted to I think it's rare pearl also, but I, I think uh, people should probably put a set of eyes on it for their own opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Any other input from the board? Seeing none. Um, I'm wondering, Mr. Chairman, if it might make sense. Well, it sounds like from what we've heard to date, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a couple of members are concerned that the existing amount of light is not sufficient. I'm intrigued by Jim's suggestion that there might be short of requiring a new uh, light pole and light at the very end of the cul-de-sac, there might be an existing pole that could service with uh, just a new light head on it, might provide sufficient light. Um, I wonder if maybe the best course of action at this point would be for me to relay that uh, those things up to the developer and ask him if perhaps there's a way for him to put I don't know, maybe there's a way to put a light on that temporarily to give us a better sense of if that pole that Jim mentioned was used, would that be sufficient? And maybe he can do something to give us an idea about that on a you know non-permanent basis until you can make it a call. If that makes sense? That's what I'll do. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, uh, approval of minutes, November 9th, 2021 and November 16th, 2021. Uh, just to note on the November 9th meeting, Mr. Donovan, you uh, were not in attendance at either meeting. So I think you would yep. be, uh, other than that, everybody else here is eligible to vote. I'll make a motion to accept the draft minutes of the November 9th, 2021 meeting as submitted. Second. Motion made by Carol, accept the November 9th, 2021 meeting. Second by Bob. Uh, roll call, please. Claudia Bolden. Aye. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Doherty. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. And Chair Kevin Donovan was absent, Same. correct? Yep. Four in favor, one in state, yes. I'd like to make a motion to accept the November 16th, 2021 minutes. Second. Motion made by Bob to accept the November 16th, 2021 minutes. Accepted by Claudia. Roll call, please. Claudia Bogan. Aye. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Doherty. Aye. 
Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Kevin Donovan. Abstain. Uh, four in favor, one abstain. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Planning Board Director update. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, just briefly, I'll recap our next meeting, as we've said, is January 11th. Right now, it's scheduled to be an in-person meeting to be held in the City Council Chambers at starting at 7. Right now, the agenda will include the following, the continued public hearing on uh, Legacy Lane modification request, uh, the election of new board officers for calendar year 2022, and we'll also have a discussion I'm planning on potential revisions to filing fees. Um, we are asked to look at them annually. We have not updated them in a number of years, but I will be recommending at least some changes, at least in part to, to reflect uh, increased costs of advertising, which we've experienced over the last year. They've gone up now. I'm gonna say Karen would have a better sense, but it's 25 to 33% increase maybe in the cost of our legal notices. So we will, cut. Well, my hope is to come to you in January with some proposed uh, changes and explanations. Uh, changing your regulations would in fact require a public hearing. So once we get consensus on uh, what we want the fees to be or how we want them to change, we could consider then scheduling a public hearing for one of your February meetings. And right now that's what we have scheduled for January and that's my report. Thank you. I see no other business on the agenda. So absent anything coming to light, I would make a motion to adjourn the planning board meeting at 7.57 PM. Second. Motion made by Claudia to adjourn the planning board meeting. Second by Bob, roll call please. Claudia Bogan. Aye. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Doherty. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Chair Kevin Denovan. Aye. Five in favor, not opposed. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Happy holidays. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.